What's up everybody and welcome back to my circle along with my beautiful wife Carrie. Today we're going to cover chapter two of Pray Big for Your Marriage and we're excited to jump in it. So you ready to get this started, babe? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do this. Oh, I couldn't wait to share this one. Any moment, he will take you from waiting on it to walking in it. Cheers to no more surprise babies. <laughs> Regardless of what you're going through, it won't last forever. Our marriage is goals because you don't just fall into goals, you work for it. You and that's our story, and we're sticking to it. Have a blessed day, y'all. Okay, so uh Drop a one if this is the first time that you're joining us. Drop a two um, if you've been on our marriage thing before or you're doing the book with us, let us know. Um, the book we're going over is... Pretty Big for Your Marriage. And this is chapter two. Chapter two of it. So We yeah. did chapter one last week. So if you guys haven't been following along, we're going to do a chapter a week and we're just going to go live and talk about that chapter. And then we'll uh, repost it. I just repost the edited version to my YouTube because I just want to have it there too. I'm a, it's I'm not a, on Facebook anymore. So if you want to watch week one, you have it's on. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to watch and catch up on week one, you better go to his YouTube and watch it. And we're on chapter two. You guys can jump in at any time. Like, don't think like these chapters are. It took me about five minutes to read. So we're just doing it slowly like we yeah, would just, as if we're going through it yeah do it at your own pace i yeah. would recommend doing it and, and we always recommend <laughs> you getting a book for yourself and for your significant other and then reading the book separately yep. and then coming together to discuss so we've read it separately and we haven't discussed the book yet so, so we're just discussing it on here yeah with you guys so listen. okay so should we start yeah let's get started you start us out, you know, you <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin says, she's been with us before. Amanda said it's her first time. Tamika, this is number three. Hey, Tamika, man. okay. You start. What did you I'll think? start uh, okay. with that being said, the uh, the chapter of this book uh, was Big Harry Audacious, Audacious Prayers for You and Your Marriage. So the first thing that I want to do is just open up tonight with a prayer just for our marriage and us and also for you guys. So God, uh, be with us tonight. Uh, these amazing people who've shown up just to hear us and just have a conversation with us, God. I pray that you just let everybody come with open mind and open heart, including us, and just share what you put on our heart to share and just let these uh, words go forth and just break the yoke of divorce and just let people know marriage is supposed to be fun. Uh, and it's supposed to be about love and understanding that sometimes love is hard, but we have to uh, choose to uh, not let our emotions run our day, not let our emotions run our marriage, but let our commitment towards our spouse uh, and our e towards each other just continue to drive us. So uh, I thank you for these amazing people to show up tonight and just uh, bless us and the words that we speak and just let tonight just be uh, fun, full of laughter and just no more number one, God. We, we, no more number one, God. Just, God, just get rid of the number one. In Jesus' name, no more number ones. Okay, hold on. Drop an A if you love that prayer. <laughs> no, I don't mind that. Okay, so I really like this chapter because it. I was telling my husband, I was like, I really am excited for tonight because this. I think the second chapter was just really inspiring. Because it really, well, we're going to go into it more into detail, but it really gave you like specific prayers to pray for your marriage. And so I like that because sometimes I just run out of ideas. And so it was like, oh yeah, ooh, that's good. I, I'm sorry, I underlined a lot of things. And I felt myself, or I started praying during, while I was doing this. I was like, oh, I don't have to wait. I'm just going to do it right now because otherwise I'm going to forget. So I was like, great. It was a great chapter. It was longer. Yeah, than, it was definitely longer. Than the first one, but it wasn't, it literally about five, well, five minutes, so it's very quick. Yeah, and I think what I got from it, it talked about prayer a lot, but like you said, one of, without exception, one of the most effective resources in any marriage is prayer. And I think that's just, for me, like I said, when I read books, I try not to just put it in a box like this is about marriage, but it's also about life. Uh, so it can be uh, effective for your business, it's effective for whatever you want it to be effective with. So for me, I just try to take it in that perspective, like we're doing this for our marriage, but at the same time, like when my wife say this, 
like excited her because I know for her she loved to dream big. So when she hear like these big audacious prayers, like it's not just for our marriage, it's almost for every aspect of her life. So for yeah. me it's like going into it and I say like have an open mind. Like she said she's not married, but like picking up this book is also gonna help you in other areas if you allow it to. So uh for me I just love the fact he listed out some of the things that what prayer helps you to do. He said it humbles you, it guides you, it changes you, it helps you to see your spouse differently, it it equips you. Uh, and for me, this was probably the most powerful thing that I got from the book. Uh, and he said, your time before God in prayer will not only give you a vision of how you should function in your marriage, but it will also equip you with the grace to actually do so. And I think that was the most powerful part of this chapter for me, like equipping us with the grace to uh, really show up in our marriage. And I think sometimes that we have to remember, like we're still young, even though we've been married seven years, we're still pretty young in marriage. So we I have think a, we've only been married for six years. Six years, I think it's seven. It's 22, we got married in what, 15? 16. 15? We got married in 16. Listen. <laughs> last time and i didn't correct you but Listen, i was like okay he would give you grace sure that's fine <laughs> 2016 so. man i thought it was that was riley was born in 15 yeah, so 16, we got married in 2016. It'll so. be seven years this year. Seven years I'm just year. preparing for our anniversary this year. I was cool year. with it. I was like, but I No, but what <laughs> I'm saying is like, he will equip you with the grace to do so whatever yeah, you need in so your good. marriage. And I think that's what I had to learn. Like, like you not only have to give your spouse grace, but you have to give yourself grace as well because you're learning and unlearning and relearning a lot of things for yourself, how to be a good husband, myself, uh, in marriage, because some of the examples that I've seen probably wasn't a healthy version uh, that I didn't want to carry into my marriage. And I did in the beginning because that's all I knew. But at the same time, when you decide to uh, go do personal development and work on yourself and you start to know differently, then you have to start acting differently. You have to deal with some of the issues that dealt with in the past. And I think that's where that grace come in and giving yourself grace and also giving uh, your spouse grace as well. So yeah, uh, like so I said, good. that was probably one of the biggest things that really stuck out to me, equipping you with the grace to actually do so in your marriage. That's so good. Uh, okay, so my first thing that I underlined was was, I think we got this question actually last time we were on live is somebody was like well my husband doesn't oh, yeah. pray <clears throat> and it's actually he literally goes into this right away in the book it says he faithfully and consistently went to God on behalf of his wounded bride he asked for her healing and the restoration of her faith so basically that was an answer to the question that we got last time is if your significant other doesn't pray you can go to God on their behalf yeah. and you just keep doing that and I just thought that was really, really cool. And then I also wrote, prayer has an ability to reduce your ego and mm, adjust your, your attitude. attitude. Do I, you did that too? Yeah. Yeah. And because sometimes I think we, it's not like a lot of times we go, to, we pray and like, oh God, change him and do all these things. Like, I can't stand this or whatever, but it's really, it could just be you. Like you're pro you know, when they say like, if you're pointing at somebody, there's like three fingers pointing back at yeah. yourself. And so I think if it reduces your ego, well, it humbles you, like you said, and realize that you might be part of the problem. <laughs> yeah. We all got issues, we got yeah. junk. And that was leading into like, uh, the next thing that I underlined, it says, God is interested in changing your spouse but he's equally interested in changing you. And so for me, that's why I say don't pray that God changes your spouse because yeah. many times like you could, you need to be changed as well. So for me, it's like when he talked about in the last chapter about being specific in the things that you want to see in your husband, pray those things. Like I said, my wife used to say things and it took me a minute to like, don't get offended. Like that's what she wants to see you become. So like she's speaking these things and praying these things over you. So it's not that anything is wrong for you, but she just see more and greater for you. Things that you probably can't see uh, within yourself because you see the falls. You see everything that you've been, do been through and don't feel like maybe you're not worthy of being these things. So for me, I think uh, that was an important thing. And also like on, the, at, like on the same topic, it's like for me, it's like also like, don't change for your spouse, change for you. Because like we said before, like your spouse, like your joy can't be found in your spouse. Yeah, like so it has true. to come from yourself. So for me, I, I like all the time, it's like when you do things, you have to do it for you because like her attitude and moods change a lot, especially like dealing with what, like it changes. And like, if I changed according to her mood and her <laughs> attitude, like our house will be, it would be pretty crazy. I, probably one of the, my best marriage quotes that I heard from a guy said, it's okay uh, to have a bad day in marriage, just don't have a bad day on the same oh, day. So, so if she's having a bad day and she's dealing with things because the, whatever she may be going through, like, 
I can't afford to have a bad day as well because that's gonna like our house is literally gonna go crazy so we have to understand like it's okay for her to go through that but at the same time i have to know and pick the battles uh that i choose to fight and understand like we both can't go through it so i have to pick up the slack and be a rock for her uh regardless of how i feel like, like i said in the prayer like don't uh let your emotions run you in your marriage you have to run and control your emotions you have to be the one uh to tell your emotions and what to do so for me it's about understanding like like we all go through things and life hit us in different ways and it's how you react to it but it's also teaching you have to understand your kids are watching you and how you respond to these different things and it's also letting your spouse know like you said when you have somebody that's going to go to bat for you when you're having a bad day like this is the person that i want to be in my life with so uh for me i try to be that try to be understanding and empathetic and give a given ear sometimes sometimes you talk it off uh but at the same time like that's what a spouse is for you can't always solve the problem she was sometimes just love to talk about things that's not a bad thing that's her nature and mine isn't to talk until i get on live or something yeah. <laughs> then i love to talk but uh that's perfect but like that's i said perfect. i think you just have to be understanding and just also being like having that grace and just being empathetic and so also just knowing your spouse and just like i said like you it's okay to have a bad day in marriage just don't have a bad day on the same day so that's so true man that's so good okay a bunch of people what do you think i said when i was like <laughs> she'd have the moves and things well, no, no somebody actually commented and said i actually was like he just called you out. I was like, that is so true though, because my hormones sometimes I go, I can feel it too. It's like something just, I go, Ooh, so it's, listen, it's a it, good thing that you're yes, pretty listen, calm. It goes both ways. One day our kids, our boys wouldn't snap on them, but I was like, I like, I cut it out really fast. And she was like, you've been really like, you just been on them like this. And I was like, when you get tired of repeating yourself eventually, ah. then you're gonna like, Aubrey. I don't know what she just said. <laughs> Well, I, like I told her, like, when you get tired of repeating yourself, like, you're just going to stop things right now. And, like, probably a couple weeks later, I found her and she just... I was doing the exact same, same thing. thing. And oh, I was but like, it was almost worse because I was yeah, like, I'm so was, sorry. Yeah, I, she snapped and it was just like... I know. It must have been, I don't know what... I don't know what happened. I gotta shut this door really. Right. A bunch of people asked what book this is. So this is Pray Book for Your Marriage. And if you're watching on YouTube, the link will be below. Uh, and so this is week two and the first week, this is just a really quick recap, but like the first week is on his YouTube. So we're on week two. <laughs> okay. You know I said you, you get moody? You like you? Yeah, but I agree. I mean, that's, oh, that's yeah. just real. Yeah. <laughs> 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 No, I don't want to feel Drop like I'm calling you. Drop a B you. if you no, 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 can no, no. relate Listen, as a woman. To go through the whole alphabet <laughs> you know how you like to go through. We're going to get to C by the end of the night. Drop a B if you're a woman and you understand. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is a good question. Ooh. Asia says, how do y'all work through your emotions when the kids are running around screaming and crying and can't even talk as a couple? It gets frustrating and it's easy to snap at each other because there's so many emotions. When I, my <laughs> husband and I struggle with that sometimes. We struggle with that too. We don't. We don't no. snap at each other though. No, because I feel like I'm at the stage where I just ignore it all. Yeah. <laughs> it's so bad. He goes, "How do you?" I feel like because they're just always screaming and crying, so I just shut them out. I'm like, yeah. I just because I'm just like. <clears throat> we don't really snap at each other though. No, we actually don't snap at each other. No, we snap at our kids though. Not all the time. Yeah, not all the time. But it's like not like sometimes a, you do, but it's, like not. It's not like a snap as in a bad thing. It's almost like a snap is like if I have to tell you the same thing a hundred times at some point, like put the hammer down. Like, look, you should know this by now. That type of thing. And tired of uh, being repetitive. But I think the main thing, and I'll just be honest with this, the main thing with us uh is having some type of structure or some type of like uh schedule. Like yes. our, our boys. Oh. They have school, so from eight to what three o'clock they're in school, and just right now Aubrey, she's the only one that's not on the schedule. The twins, they're on the schedule. They now they just sleep right now. They go to sleep before seven, so we have from like they sleep from like seven to seven, so they're on a pretty good schedule. The only one that's not on the schedule is Aubrey, and the only bad thing about this is like we work from home. And the twins and Aubrey is home full time. We haven't put them in daycare or anything. So that's something that we do by choice because we can't find anything that's open. Yeah. Uh, so we have to deal with it. But at the same time, I tell Carrie like all the time because me, it's like we're going to be in this house 24 seven. Like I'm not worried about your safety, anything. Like if I need to get something done, like read my devotionals in the morning, like 
I'm not going to sit and hold you this entire time. Like, I'm going to get done what needs to be done. Like, I could bring you downstairs. We have a whole playroom that we got literally put together for you girls or the boys or whatever the case may be. So, for me, it's easy for me to do it because I'm not mama bear here. Like, I don't have those mom instincts. She sometimes don't want to put them down. I don't know if it's, uh, what is it, mom good or what is it? Like, you don't want to, like, you just feel like you just, you don't want to, like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's just a mom thing. Yeah, for me, it's like... Yeah. We're in the drop house. a C if you understand. Don't drop no C. <laughs> drop a C, Put them kids down. Put the C. Don't put the C's down. Listen, when you get on an airplane, what the first thing they tell you? Put on your seatbelt before you try to assist anybody else. She be getting mad in the morning time because these girls be going crazy and they be on it and I be trying to tell like, babe, put them down. No, the kids, the babies just love me so much. <laughs> No, no, that's and, not it. They just hang on me. They want mom twenty four seven. And when she snaps, yeah, then I'm like, I need a freaking break. So I like, I think everybody has a breaking point. That's yeah. just what I'm saying. So it happens to everybody. That like, you're just not alone. Yes, but they're talking about what's the solution to this. I don't have Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> So if you have a solution, we have five kids. So the look, there's is how comments coming it. in. It's definitely a mom thing. Ashley says, Ada says, okay, I felt so guilty for ignoring, but it's necessary sometimes. They, fe they feed Eat diapers, diapers change wine. wine. Oh my gosh, we talk about our twins. Milk, <laughs> milk, get the milk, drink the milk, push the nipple down in the bottle. Milk, milk. I tell my husband to ignore them for a minute. They're okay. <clears> there are so many toys. They're okay. Yes, they are okay. That's what I learned. That's. Well, he tries to say, like, they're okay. They're yeah. fine. And it's not even about, like, just ignoring them. It's teaching them not to, like, feel like they have to be on you all the time. Because our problem with that right now and with us doing that so much, and I stopped doing it, is, like, when we go to a family function or we do anything. They only want to be with us. You can't do anything. And so we get there around, like, we went to, like, we had a Christmas party with her family. And we get there, and she's telling me to get the girls. I'm like, no, like, these people want to come. They want to all see the babies. And, like, I'm they gonna go and enjoy their time with their family. And it's like her, it's like, she feel gifted for it. And I was like, no, like, the reason they do that here is because we allow them to do that at home. And if you don't break that at home, when you get out in public or you wanna go to a family function, even though these are like family members of theirs that love them, that wanna see them, that wanna hold them, and they're acting like that, it's because we allow it at home. So if you don't break that pattern at home, you can't expect for them to like all of a sudden want to change and do something different when they're out and about. So for me, it's not about ignoring them is teaching them like you don't have to meet me all the time like 24 7 24 7 like you, you should have independent play yes like you shouldn't be attached to me this much even though you're not in daycare even though we don't like nothing literally is open because one our twins not even two you years so it's hard to, to get them to within something babies and so for me it's like you have to like you you literally like have to give yourself a break like, for me, I'm going to sit down and have my coffee. I'm going to sit down and do my devotional. Because if I don't have that, then you have to understand. It is easier said than done, Heather. That's so true. <laughs> yes, but listen, at the end of the day, you have to choose your heart. What do you want? To snap at your kids all the time and get pissed off because you're tired and stressed out and depressed and all of these things? Or do you want to take five minutes a day to yourself so that you can get yourself together? I know what I do. This is so funny. I go to the bathroom you, and I you lock, lock the door. Lock the door. Guess who's at the bathroom because door? I run to the bathroom. Like, I just need like three minutes. And guess like, who's at the bathroom no, door? No, so I lock the door and they just sit up at the bathroom door, door crying. But mom, I'm like, I just need like a minute. Peace, and, and, please. And for, and for me, it's like they we fed them breakfast, we give them milk, we have oh. cartoons on, we've gotten two brothers off the school. Like, they are fine. Nothing's gonna happen. So it's like, don't feel guilty. Like I said, that's, I don't feel guilty about doing it work. Yes. It's like, that's amazing. A, but for me, like, that is the point. That is the solution for you. You yeah. give yourself a break from them. So for me, it's teaching them, like, it's not ignoring them. It's actually, like, I think for me, just being honest, I think it's just a healthy thing to do because, yeah. like, it's teaching them, like, not to be so attached. And when you see that with Lily right now, like, she just... She's independent. Like, she is very independent. And it's, she don't need us. Lundy, she's still working on that. And, <laughs> Lundy's my like, Lundy favorite. But she's getting out of there because we're starting to, like, even more not... Let her just feel like that attachment. Yeah, they do the same thing to me. They just pound and cry in the door. And I just... Yeah, just like... I'm sitting there drinking my coffee. <laughs> yeah, that's all. They don't want They dad. don't. They want mom. So they just sit outside the door and they just cry. Yeah. It's fine. <clears throat> but it's not like I don't love them. Because I still play with them, hold them, kiss them, and do all these things. I'm just not going to do it to you. We're going to spend this whole entire day together. So... Yeah. 
<clears throat> okay, I don't even know where we were. <laughs> yeah, that, no, that was good because <laughs> I mean, talk. yes, that's yeah. like a part of that's that's a part of marriage, yeah. especially when you have five kids. And for me, it's like, like you said, what's like, how do you do it? Like a schedule, like our boys, we have our chore board. And they don't like to always do it, but we have to understand, like, if we don't enforce it, they're going to push it until they can get away with it. So for us, so having a system uh, in play, like I said, the only one that don't have a schedule that I wish was on the schedule is Aubrey. I think Everybody we, like, else. we just got tired. No, no, I, we had we had the babies and then you just kind of went through your things and that just kind of threw everything well, off Aubrey of her. Aubrey just kind of got off the hook a little. And we she had me back on, yeah, yeah. She's so <clears throat> independent. Not just that, but we are raising somebody's husband and father one day. That's, that's my mindset. Nice, that's, that's so good. good. I forget that sometimes. Yeah, I mean, teach them to be responsible. Well, yeah, or we just, do. Yeah. yeah. No, but um, it's not easy to do because at the same time, like you, you feel guilty. And it's like, because those are your babies. Well, there, I, and some, I think <clears throat> Heather Calm said she was like, and they're my last. So that's like, I'm like, oh, it's my yes, last and, ones. So tired. I have a great husband. Yes, I feel that. You do? I mean, like, I feel so <laughs> tired. <laughs> See, I be trying to tell my wife, y'all. <laughs> what are you trying to tell me? I be trying to tell you about to go in that bathroom and hide. You I do. do I do. Close that door. I can only pee so much. Just be like, oh <laughs> Man, we got upstairs with a the gate. They can't come downstairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just said, Listen, we just... better put her in that rocking chair and let Aubrey do their hair or something. I don't know. Okay, yeah. where are we at here? All right, we was talking about prayer and prayer changed you. Prayer <laughs> helped us. Prayer <laughs> gave me discernment. They going to be all right. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, one, the next thing that I underlined, which I loved because I thought this was so cool. It says, I had a mentor who used to always tell young Christian men, women who were looking for a husband to not settle for a hot dog when God promised them a T-bone steak. I'm trying to say, yeah. No, I just thought that was really cool. I was like, oh. Okay. I had the last, next day. Uh, a big, hairy, audacious prayer is a request that requires a miraculous response from God. And I think we talked about last uh, last video about how when you ask for God, like for a request, he's going to answer. So if you're going to ask for something, you should ask for something big. Because we already asked for little things. And if he's going to answer, why would you want to ask for something bigger? I mean, why not? You know, what do you have to lose? <laughs> yeah. And I think once you ask, you have to, to believe it's happened. But you also have to be ready to back up that with some action. Because it's always going to come with something. You doing something on your part. Uh, so for me, I think when you ask for big things in your marriage, like you have to understand, like it's still going to cost you work. So for me, I tell carry all the time like before you want to jump into something count the cost of that so like you pray these big things for your marriage when you pray these big things for your business then you have to count the cost and are you willing to pay that price for what that thing is going to cost so uh for us part of counting that cost is like for us deciding that we want to invest in our marriage like we got to invest in this book and then we got to read this book then we got to talk about some of the things in this book then we got to unlearn some of the things that we picked up along the way then we got to relearn some things then we got to go out and, and try apply to it. and apply these things and then we got to try to have healthy communications while yeah. two year old is running around out here naked want to put no Mickey Mouse <laughs> costume so real life is going to hit you while you got this mindset that you want to pray and ask for these big things for so for me it's like are you willing to pay that price understand that Life is going to happen. Things are going to come up. Why we get on this live and want to talk about marriage and things that we do about raising our kids while our kids are actually going, cr well, not our kids, our child, uh, one girl uh, who's overtired. She's just not acting out because she's tired. Like, how are you going to live? How are you going to deal with life uh, and these things when these things come up? So for me, it's also about praying big and having these acting for these big audacious things, but also having uh, to put the action in behind these things to make it. Uh, and to keep it uh, into freaks. And I always say, like, uh, there's one thing to have success and another thing to have and to be successful because success is a one-time deal. Like, you can have success in uh, this one specific specific thing but to be successful is full of success so for me i want our marriage to be successful full of success season after season year after year i don't want to have just one good year of marriage and be like man you remember back in 2015 we had one kid and life was great like i want to be like we you do know talk it. about that year also. <laughs> yeah yeah but at the same time like looking at our life now like we don't yeah. rest on that we yeah, don't dwell so on true. that and be like man life is good then 
yeah. what are we doing now? Like, yeah. we're not dwelling on that one good thing because we've had so many things outside of that. So, uh, here she is now. Come here, baby. It's Mickey, Mickey Mouse. Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing out there, girl? How did you get this costume on? What are you doing out there? Can you there? say hi? <laughs> <laughs> we could just finish what they were saying right here. Yeah. Okay. You, you want to go get your brothers? <laughs> you should go get your brothers. Go get your brothers. Let mom and dad do this quick, okay? Go oh, tell them. for you. Okay. Hold it out there for me, okay? okay. Close the door for me, you okay? Can drink it. Close the door for okay, me. Okay, just one. I'll be right out there, okay? <laughs> so I'm telling you, listen, sometimes you just have to know their love language as well. Hers Gatorade. is gifts, so Gatorade. I gave Gatorade. her a gift, and she got out there. That's not even really love like That's just like that just incentivizing it. Okay, one of my favorite things. I think even every time we've read this book is this is just such a great reminder. But uh, did you know that the divorce rate already is fifty percent? But uh, did you know that in Christian marriage or Christian marriages are just as likely to end in divorce as those of non Christians? But what do you think the divorce rate is for praying couples? Half of the what and it says what do you think the divorce rate is for praying couples? Try one percent or or less. That's right. Couples who pray together have a greater than ninety nine percent chance of having a marriage that lasts. So, I think every time I hear that statistic, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so, like, that's crazy that 99% yeah. of praying couples. Yeah, consistently, I would say. Yeah. I mean, oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. I'm pretty sure there's been people in seasons that have, that yeah. Together, oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's easy <clears throat> to fall off. Yeah. Yeah. We've read this book five times. I know. Why do you think it's not it? like you read one time and it's like, oh, we're good. No, it's yeah. like we're redoing it because we're like, oh, yeah, we need a refresh. Like, yeah. why did people keep going to the gym? Because they want to build the muscles. Yeah. Build your muscles. Yeah. You got to keep doing it. Becomes a habit. Yeah. You want to see that you start seeing the growth and all yeah. those things and you want to continue to see it. So, uh, yeah, I love it. I love the fact that it, it is about pre big for your marriage. And also, just you have to show up for your marriage as well. You can't pray and expect things to change. You have to be willing to change yourself. You have to be willing to do and apply yeah. the things that's in this book. It's great to get on here and talk about what's all in this book, but that's not what made our marriage successful. Us actually applying these things to our marriage is what has made our marriage what it is today. Not saying it's perfect, uh, but it's pretty much further than it was back in 2015. Like, even though we talk about that year, uh, and that was because it was just. It was booming. Uh, we weren't but, even married. That was we weren't even married, but listen, it was booming. It was. And one year, life was great. Yeah. But it's been even greater because, like, we've been through so much. And at the same time, our faith has stretched so much. And we, like I said, when you go through this, like, I, I swear we can go through this book and we can, like, literally talk about the seasons that we were in. Probably the first time we probably, I think it just had, uh, probably just had Astra maybe. Yeah. And so we just had our two boys. And like, yeah. I think each year, which is why, probably why I didn't want to go to this book anymore. Because each year that we read it, we had another kid. So that's not happening anymore. So we picked it back up. It was like, it's such a good book. I'm making a joke with that. But it's such a good book that I think it, it just, for me, it's just like worth digging into. Because like I said, it's one thing to read it, but once you start applying these things and actually living it out and it becomes who you are, that's when you start to see the changes in your marriage. I'm pretty sure there's been people over the years that read this book and can say it didn't do anything for my marriage. And I can ask you, like, what did you do differently after reading the book? And many times it probably wouldn't be nothing. You probably prayed that week, but did you continue to pray? Like, did you pray for God to continue to change your spouse or did you pray for God to, like, change me, do something within me. So for me, I think it's about applying these things that you read. And also you have to have a different mindset. Somebody talked about it earlier. It's like, a, it's a mindset thing. And I think once you shift these things and get it into alignment with what you want, then you start moving closer to those things. Yes. Uh, She's trying to bring it. I'm well, trying to I keep mean, her out there. Well, I'm saying open the gator right, and give it to her and then she'll sit on there and drink Oh, no, it. it's for me, so she's going to hold it. Oh, I told her she Listen. could drink it. I already told her she could drink it. See, we got a bun here. <laughs> we should have we had, we had to get our communication up. <laughs> yeah. You, she said, I got a Gatorade for you. Is that for me or for you? For you. For me? Oh. I knew it was for Dad. You love Dad, don't you, girl? Are you going to drink it? <laughs> okay, you can have the rest of it. Take it out there, okay? Hey, sit at the table. You. Aubrey, you're so beautiful. She ain't even looking at me, y'all. Love you. Love you. 
She's so funny. Okay, one thing, another thing I underlined that I really like. <laughs> she need to keep coming because you just keep coming with it, girl. What? I have, I, I'm trying to see where I left off, and I saw what I underlined, and it says prayer is the spiritual equivalent of plugging your soul into a battery charger. Dang, so good. That was just. What does that mean to you? That means that that you, if you need to be rejuvenated, then mm. you should pray. Or mm. if you feel spiritually dead or dead Ooh. inside, then yes. you probably need to pray because you're drained. And so praying is like filling yourself up or like filling your cup up yes. first. And I think just to like, we probably can wrap it up. Just going back to you talked about earlier, uh, when you said like the guy, like he prayed faithfully and consistently on his bride's side. And yeah. I think the question that they asked leading up to that, what do you do? when your spouse is filed for spiritual bankruptcy. Mm. And I think that just goes into everything that you're saying. That's when you say pray on the behalf of your spouse. Like, what do you do when that battery is dead? Like, you pray oh, over them, you so pray good. for him. You have to do these things for them. Uh, and I think, like, once you just go to war on their behalf, like, not praying for them, them to God, just to change them and do these things, but God, give them uh, restless energy. God, give them this. Give some, this is exactly what they need at their workplace. Give them this. Pray for those things. And I think when you when you start seeing that and they just start seeing those changes, I think that's when like the marriage and the bond that you guys have and it just uh, something for some reason just uh, draws you in closer. I can, I don't know how to explain it besides that it's God and it's prayer uh, that's doing it. But uh, like I said, these things work, but you have to work it and you have to do it consistently. You can't just think God is a genie that you're going to pray for God to do this one thing and he's going to show up and do this. Like, like he's going to do these things, but you have to co-labor with him. You have to partner with him. You have to come along and walk along with him, along with your spouse as well. That's so good. Okay, and my last one. Keep Actually, going, I know. Girl. This is, this is Listen, a, like, she like an old Baptist preacher right now. <laughs> She's going to close 30 times, y'all. Uh... This is the last thing I underlined, oh, but it's Baptist actually one of my favorite scriptures. And it says, I came, Jesus said, I came that they might have life, comma, and have it abundantly. Ooh. And then I wrote, what side of the comma do you want to be on? Mm. So do you just want to, like, Jesus came so you can just have life, but do you want to have life and have it abundantly? Mm. And so I wrote that down. I was like, oh, that is so true. I want to have an abundant life. Mm. And so I'm like, that's when you really want to start asking for more and asking for bigger things. Or even just asking in general if you're not asking because asking you shall receive. And there's just so many scriptures to back that up. Yep. So that was good. Mm, that's so good. And, and just saying. like giving you guys an example of this, we keep telling you guys we've been through this book like, five times now and like if we would have went through this book once but like that is a great book and not picked it up again that we wouldn't have got everything that we got on the other side of that condo which is the abundance of like love and growth and just the things that we have in our marriage now like we picked it up because we've continued to choose that abundant side of to have that more of it to uh just continue to live these things out in a way that probably uh most people don't because they you know it's easy to like see something or read something to get from a book and it's like oh, that was great and then we put it back on the shelf but sometimes you have to leave these things out because the wisdom is still there and once you just continue to pick it up and be reminded of these things like my wife said earlier like when she read this chapter like things start to come alive within her it was already within her. It just needed to be reignited. And sometimes I can't do that for her, but by her picking up this book and then us talking about it, then you see that fire just start to spark and everything started to, to happen in a way that was happening previously for her. So, uh, yeah, that's all I got for you guys. And you close again, girl. Oh, I was going to just say something that came to my Woo! head. <laughs> no, no. I told y'all about the scripture no. said, girl. So, you on it tonight. No, go, go. I was going to say <laughs> that some things that you can do in your life mm. and some things that have helped us is let's say if your church has like a marriage group I highly suggest joining it because yeah. we joined them and we would read different books and have discussions oh, like every Wednesday mm. night uh, we've done zooms with other married couples we've also done a lot of marriage retreats yep. uh, where I think there's actually one coming up so I'm like so excited I gotta look oh, it up gosh. and uh, you will go for a weekend and you have to ask like grandma and grandma to watch the kids or and then you go and have that time with your your spouse but you don't just go you actually go to grow yeah. and you go through booklets and we we've, we've been through like lutheran marriage we've been through catholic marriage retreats we've been through all mm -hmm. types of dominations and every single one of them has had nuggets for yeah. us 
So don't I'm like be I think you should just be open to, to receive from yeah. like listen, yeah. marriage is marriage. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you're getting it from, like it's a good good wisdom. Like and I think yeah. many times you don't get to judge what's well you can judge, but sometimes you can't judge a book by its cover. You have to understand like when people have been together for a long, long time, they may know some things regardless if you have to go to the same church or whatever that case may be. So yeah. I've been like so surprised that some of the like marriage things that we've been to because if I was to say, well, this is who's hosting it, so I don't think we should go to that and yeah. close myself off and not been open to it. Like, I just think about so much that we probably would have missed because of that. So I think you just have to be open to learning and to lean in uh, to some of the, like, literally some of the resources that you have. Like Carrie said, it may be at the church. Just be open to, like, literally invest in your marriage. When we, Every time we've been through this book, we did something following this book. Like yes. you said with the marriage mm -hmm. courses. So for me, it's like when we started to do that, it was almost like we was in alignment with our marriage. We was in alignment in such a way that we ended this book for the first time. Like this was so awesome that even though we're like probably one or two years just married, we want to do something like this for ourselves. But we was like, we're too young. Like we haven't been married long enough to do this. We were going to like do like, like, yeah, we're going to host these, host all these it, marriage groups. And literally. <laughs> We've only been married for like, it was literally a year or two. Yeah. And <laughs> like literally, like literally within a couple of days, walked up in church and then we got pretty much invited to the, like this church marriage group. And it was like, it's crazy how God works when you open yourself up and you're just in alignment and you're doing the things that you know you need to be doing for that season in your life. And like literally, like we got into a marriage group and it was just, I thought it was just the most awesome experience, just oh, to be honest. loved. I it was, really would like to get into another one. It was yeah. so good. Highly recommend a marriage, marriage group. groups yeah like that's just at your local church yeah you're just looking i don't know every church is different but i ask around and if there isn't one you could always start one yeah start one yourself like this yeah. is we just decided to do this yeah online because this is stuff that we love to do and we're gonna yeah. do it whether we're live or not so why not go live and just share some of the things that we love to share yeah and hopefully it can just help one person because you uh -huh. never know i'm like this somebody invited us to do this book with them we're and still. it and we're still doing it six years later, you know. Seven, our, you sure that's it? No, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was so good. I'm excited for the next chapter. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a good one because these are too. So, well, I think that's gonna be it. So, thank you guys and have a blessed night. Drop a knee if you guys had Come so. On, man. We was doing so good. She done ordered the whole menu. Drop a Z. We gotta get through the alphabet. The whole menu on here. <laughs> Okay, that was fun. So we will see you probably next week. Bye.